Hey guys, Dead Violent 3 here back once again for a review. And the movie that I'm going to be reviewing tonight is another film from Toe Tag Pictures. Only this one is a bit different. Instead of um, relying a lot on gore and special effects like a lot of other Toe Tag films, this one relies more on character development and story. So it's actually pretty different from other Toe Tag movies. But um, the movie is Sella Tersica. This is the pre or edition that I got from that package that Totec sent me a while back. I also got a letter signed by F Fred Vogel right there. So uh, thank you once again Totec for sending me this great DVD. And the movie, uh, the movie is basically about a family who's waiting on their son to get back from fighting in Iraq. There's the mother who is played by Camille Keaton who as everyone knows is from My Spot on a Grave. There's um, a sister, a cousin, I think an older brother who um, works as a tattoo artist and his wife. And um, the sister, sister's name is Ashley, and she's very uh, close to the son who's coming home. And she has a boyfriend, and her boyfriend is without a doubt the most annoying character that I've ever seen in a movie. His name is, uh, forget Gavin, but he calls himself Orgasm. And he's, uh, and he's this DJ who goes to parties and stuff like that, and he's upset with her because she won't go to him, go with him to a party. And you're sitting there thinking, wow, she just realized that her brother was not killed fighting, you know, in Iraq, and he's mad at her for wanting to stay home with her brother just because she won't go with him to a party, really. Yeah, I just thought I wanted to get that out of the way, you know, because um, his character really got on my nerves throughout the whole movie. That was the only thing about the movie. Just, But um, anyway, uh, Brad, uh, the son his name is Bradley and um, he comes home and one and when he comes home he's uh, he's paralyzed and he's in a wheelchair and he looks very pale and sickly and they're not no one's really sure exactly what happened to him the doctors that found him are not sure what happened neither are any of the sergeants or anyone that saw him is really sure exactly what happened to him and he has no memory of it at all but he basically comes home and you know they got a cake for him and a nice banner and he's a very he's a very positive and optimistic person. He's very nice to everyone, very sweet. You know, when he first uh, meets everybody, he's just always happy, giving everyone hugs. Just, it just seems like an all-around great guy. He doesn't really seem that bothered by exactly what happened at at this point in the story. He seems like very just happy to be home. Um, another thing that's pretty funny is that they actually have a dog. His name is Falsy, which I think uh, is a shout out to Lucio Falsy. So I thought that was kind of cool that they named the dog Falsy. But um, yeah. So he's basically home and really excited, but as the movie uh, goes on, you tend to notice, oh, something's kind of off. Even the family members notice it. At one point, um, the sister is actually really into, really, uh, into dancing. She's a ballerina, and she offers to show Brad and the rest of the family one of her dances. And after she's finished, the um, young cousin uh, uh, whistles, and that whistle, for some reason, gives him a huge migraine. And so he has to go out of the he has to go out of the room, and when he goes out of the room, he notices that black like goo or slime or something is leaking out of his ear, and he doesn't tell anybody about this. He's a, he doesn't want to worry anyone. But as the movie goes on, you know it gets worse. Um, another thing is every time he tries to eat something, he it tastes horrible to him. Everything he eats just tastes bad. He later says that it tastes like mud and everything, but. You know, he tries not to he tries not to let the mom notice because she's she's already worried about him very a lot. And, you know, only only the older brother and I think his sister also notices it well. Even the cousin notices a bit where she basically leaves. But as the movie goes on, um, things just end up getting worse and worse. Um, I really don't want to get too much into it anymore, but I will say that for a lot of other Toe Tag movies, this movie might be a bit slow for people. This movie is very character driven. You pretty much, the only gore in it, the real gore, starts at maybe the last 20 minutes of the movie. But the rest of the movie is basically just getting to know all the characters. You get to know, you know, how they feel about Bradley being home and everything like that. And I think that, that that's really uh, cool in my, uh, in my opinion. I, I like movies where you know, it's really, it's, they're kind of slow and you learn a lot about the characters, you learn about what they feel about things, and then at the very end of the movie, basically kill them off, which is basically what happens at the end. I'm not trying to spoil it that much, but, you know, you, you learn a lot about Bradley, how he's a, he's a meddled, you know, 
his whole family looks at him as a hero, and he has a lot of medals, but there was one point where he's sitting there talking to his sister, and he's basically telling her that he's had to, you know, go through towns and stuff, and basically you just kill everybody in there. And so he's really not, he's, in one, in some way he is proud of what he's done, but in another way you can tell that he's, he's uh, kind of regretting, you know, killing all of those people. Um, there's also a scene where he's talking to the older brother and he's telling him about how he, he really does not remember a single thing. Um, basically he was just in a truck that basically just exploded somehow and then weeks later he, he woke up in the hospital somewhere. Also as the movie goes on he starts, um, like I said, he starts leaking green, um, he starts leaking this black fluid that's coming out of his ears and out of his mouth. At one scene you know, it's coming out of both his ears, then he starts spitting it out of his mouth, and it also comes out of his butt. And it's really, it's a really sick, gross scene. You don't really know exactly what's going on. The mom, of course, is really, really worried about him, because he just does not look good. At one point, he seems very optimistic and happy, but as the movie goes on, he just gets, like, weaker and weaker and weaker. Um, the sister's trying to be as optimistic as possible, but she doesn't want, she doesn't want to think, want Bradley to think that they're pitying him. But, um, actually, um, you know, it really goes on like that for a while. And, you know, once, like I said, you learn a lot about the characters. And the, uh, the guy, uh, Gavin, I could not get over how annoying he was in the whole movie. I hated his character. He, he has some of the most um, inappropriate things you could ever ask somebody that came out from the war. Like, at one point, he asked Bradley, you know, how many, how many people did you kill? And I'm like... Yeah, no. Like my, my grandfather actually was in a war, and I would never sit there and be like, "So how many people did you kill?" You know, it's not really um. Not like somebody asked somebody. It's kind of funny because after he asked him, Bradley grabs a hold of his hand. And it's like, yeah, I, I slit some people's throats. You know, it's always better when they when they when they drown in their own blood and everything, just to mess with them. And you know, he's a really likable character. Him and the uh, older brother, I think, are probably my two favorite characters in the movie, next to the little sister Ashley. Those are probably the only you know characters that um. Uh, you know, we're really good, but like I said, not really good, but I mean like really likable in the film. But like I said, um, this movie is really, really slow. So if you're not, sorry, there's a motorcycle going across. Sorry about that. But anyway, if you're not like, if you're not in the really slow movies, you might not like this. But for people that aren't that much into toe tag films, or for anyone that's not really into toe tag, like August on the Ground and things like that, I actually think you might actually like this, because this is actually completely different from Toad. This is like the exact opposite of what Always Underground is, and I really think that this one is really recommended, because, you know, you, you feel for the characters, you know, you, you get to know them in and out, and it's really, I think that it takes a lot for a movie like this to, you know, sort of strike a chord with people, and you really do get a chance, you really do get a lot of good character development, and... Um, I actually think it's really cool if uh, Fred Vogel can go from something like August on the Ground, something that that's that really graphic, that that's sick, you know, that's vulgar, and then you know where it's just wall to the wall gore, and then go to something like this that's only gory into about the last 20 minutes of the movie, and the whole rest of the movie is based on character development. So I think that's really talented. It really shows that you know he can do something else besides just blood and gore and violence. But anyway, guys, that was my review for Salator Sica. Um, if you if it sounds right up your alley, then I highly recommend uh, checking this one out. Pretty good. You can get the uh, I think you can still order the pre-order edition signed by everybody, but I'm not really sure. You can also get it from Tootex website or uh, or Amazon either way. But yeah, guys, uh, Salator Sica. Highly recommend checking it out. It's a really really good one. And um, yeah, so that's my review for Sel Selater Sica. Hope everyone enjoyed it, and I'll see you all later.